Hi, I'm Brian, and I love Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Brian, and I like Hallmark Christmas movies. I'm Dan, and I despise Hallmark Christmas movies. And I'm Neil, and I've been in a Christmas movie. And this is the Deck the Hallmark Podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's this podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's this podcast. Brendan and friends host this podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Is that uh is that Neil Bledsoe of network television fame? <laughs> <laughs> it's like him. One and the same. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, what a blessing. Oh, uh, what's up, guys? How hey buddy, how are you? This is a good angle for you, man. Mm. I'm I'm good. I'm trying to find my best angle. I don't want to dominate just the, the you know the right side of the frame. So I'll get over there here in the middle. How are just you guys? A dir- Greg? Bor- a born director. Yep. Yes, Neil you Blanco, are. Yes, guy. you are. Um, yeah. Neil, did you ever watch professional wrestling? Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> okay, uh, Mount Mount Rushmore of wrestlers. Who you got? Ooh, um, I gotta go classic man. Uh, Randy Macho Man Savage. Hold yeah. Hope. Of oh. course. Yeah. I mean, all right. Look, if we're going to like, we're talking not just like the 80s heyday of WWF, we're talking like the full deal. Um, I don't think we're anywhere without Andre the Giant. I think wow. he's up there. We just go four. Um, I think we got to go Jerry the King Lawler. Wow. wow. The King. Yeah. yeah. Man. And Hulk Man. Hogan kind of changed it. He changed the game. He did. He did change the game. And. <laughs> I man, Randy Macho Man Savage, just because. Yeah. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Come yeah. On. It's so funny now going back and watching old Hulk Hogan matches because it's like, great, you had an elbow drop. Congratulations, you figured it out with the leg drop. You did, you did the thing, yeah. but like that was just revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, yeah, completely, completely. And I actually, great. I have a theory that that the World Wrestling Entertainment is actually America's most popular form of live theater. I mean, think wow. about. It. It's like not, it's, it's not a theory. It's it's it crushes it's on the ratings yeah. every time. It yeah. absolutely is true, and it also like I think it births more stars uh, into the film and television. Sadly, than, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so your wrestling audition didn't go as you <laughs> planned. Is that what you're saying? Is it, you, and it went that? fine. It went <laughs> fine. It's <just laughs> what I'm talking about. Like everything is these days, and it's just it's hard <laughs> when I'm self taping at home to do a suplex. Especially <laughs> flying suplex. It's, yeah. How do I do it from here to there? It's like yeah. so the amount of times you've been up for the same role as Dave Batista. That's right. And they look at your resume and he's like, "Well, he's got the WWE. What do you got?" That's right. A BFA. Yeah. yeah COVID. <laughs> COVID ruined all of your in-person wrestling auditions. <laughs> yeah, is what it happened. Did. It really, really did. And look, I, I look fantastic in the speedo, and I only see that in the plate. Hi, my name's Neil Bledsoe. I'm six foot three. Um, <laughs> Out of Los Angeles, New York sometimes, and I look great in a Speedo. Yes, and I do all my own stunts. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, oh, man. I, man. Who's, uh, Dave Batista is shocking, right, to be uh, getting as many roles? He does one thing, is it, man. Is and it I, just I, me that doesn't get it? He does or one no. thing. He does one thing, and he does it really well, I guess. We're going to see him in The Onion movie. Uh, That's in, right. Uh, in the uh, new, Glass the new Knives Out. Yeah. That's right. He's in the new Knives so, Out. We'll see. I think if you really think about it, most actors do just kind of one thing. It's Maybe. the it's the great ones that go above and beyond the one thing, right? Like we're gonna talk. Look, we're about to talk about Andrew Walker, who, who is, is, dude. He's the king of Hallmark Christmas movies. There's a s- several scenes in this movie that he's played no less than thirty eight times. Yeah, like oh, I, he, yeah. I mean, he just has it down. Like this is his wheelhouse. It's a formula yeah. for him. Yeah, he's he's what they call locked in. Yeah. Yeah, he's locked in. Locked in. It's locked right. in. Uh, all right, we did the wrestling talk. We did, um, you have some. You have some. Why am I the only, I the only person that's going to give their 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 mount? Wrestling? Last week's or no? What is that? Tuesday's guest yeah. was a wrestler. A guy Wednesday, host, yesterday's guest host the bump. Some sh- re- show about professional wrestling. We've been talking about wrestling all week on this show, so <laughs> yeah. I just figured I'd keep we the just good keep it rolling. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. so I'm just getting caught up. I got you. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. all right. Let me ask you this: Who is the all-time announcer? Wrestling. Oh, it's it's Eugene, Mean Eugene. What is his name? Eugene, uh, the thing. Mean Gene Eugene Oker. Oker? Is that his name? Mean Gene Okerlund. Mean Gene Okerly. That's his name. I called him Oakerland. Eugene. Oakerland. 
Oakland. Oakland. I called him Eugene. Only his Oakland. mother calls him Eugene. Um, the only correct answer is Jim Ross. Uh, <laughs> the Ross. best. But uh, but I actually do really like uh, AJ Styles of ECW fame because he just yells and it's great. It's really all that I want. It's fantastic. He's like he's like the Spanish goal guy. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's oh! just uh, just YouTube uh, a uh, um, just YouTube like he yells oh my god a lot. He's like oh my god. It's great. It's great. If that's what you're into, which I am. You'd be a pretty good wrestling. Wanna, thank you. What was that? I think Brandon would make a great wrestling announcer. Oh, I'm not yeah. good. I'm not good enough to be an announcer. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not able to call it. I would be good color. color. I'm you good color. color. So yeah. you've heard yeah. him pronounce yeah. names, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to pronounce anybody. I just need yeah. to be like, I liked it, and that's really it. I just need I, to give my color. You know, I really want to go. I want to commute with a great play-by-play guy. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, just commute and go down like <laughs> the hellish, like the 101 rush hour or something like that. It's like, oh, sliding into the HOV lane. <laughs> Ooh, precision. <laughs> the, the color guy could be in the back seat. It's like, I love it. It really is just about taking those gaps and you have to be fearless. <laughs> That's right. This is a great bit. It's it another is. great bit. Write down, Trace. <laughs> Write that down for, I don't know. Our book. Or, That's why they say, let them work, let them live, Neil. Back to you. <laughs> let them work, let them live. That's exactly right. If you're just joining us, we're about to hit the 110, 110 interchange. Uh, I do like that. Um, really quick, the people have been asking, are you going to be in the Deck the Hallmark booth at Christmas Con for Volume 2? Is this happening or is it not? Right now. Uh, uh, in New Jersey? In New Jersey. Yeah. I have currently have a warrant out for my arrest. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I cannot. I will not be joining. No, I am shooting a, uh, I'm shooting a non-Christmas film right around Christmas uh, in Lake Tahoe. So I will be, I'll be playing the villain in a ski movie, actually. Wow. A German villain. Yeah, exactly. Not the kind of guy who's like, you can't ski on our mountain. <laughs> <laughs> why not but weird. have you thought about maybe yeah. Dude, you just that was a lot of sprockets that was a lot of mike myers sprockets thank you there. very much here, here's, here's my little ski post. yeah <laughs> i like it yes. uh, these people need to get off the mountain <laughs> uh, danger to everyone <laughs> you rip off your into your speedo yeah, that's exactly. right <laughs> now is the time you wrestle on the mountain <laughs> i will wrestle you uh are you actually playing a villain yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it's fun. It's this uh, a great writer director named uh, Katie Burrell, um, and uh, she made a name in the ski community uh, a few years ago with this job. It's uh, tough to do. Great, yeah. To well, also the, like so much of it is about like the adventure, uh, the adventure stuff, and she really kind of made it more accessible. And so she's made this is her first feature, which is about these like dirtbag girls trying to make a name for themselves in Lake Tahoe. And I'm kind of like this, this just terrible, over the top Jimmy Chin sort of mean director who comes back to Lake Tahoe after getting his teeth kicked in in Los Angeles to sort of like enforce all my like bad vibes on the town. Mm, wow yeah, exactly and you oh. can't get out of that to come to new jersey you're saying uh <laughs> like i said i'd be there except for the uh, one up for my arrest yeah more yeah. than fair yep yep yep, 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 yep. Exactly. and it's edison new jersey so it's well, one of the highlights <laughs> yeah the totally, exactly. yeah. i just want to say really quickly to the sweet woman that Dude, emailed us somebody emailed us and was like and you they guys said, haven't seen all of that please edison, stop jersey. making fun of edison new jersey I thank you so much, and I just wish anybody else in Edison was more like you. Yes. Uh, yes. Hey, hey, thanks for turning the light bulb on for us, ladies. That's exactly right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's I right. love I love you so much, and that was such a sweet email. Sincerely, thank Dude, you for the, sending that. You sent us a couple of recommendations, and I don't want to give away the names of the places because I want to go. I want to go. I want it to be too I don't crowded. want all of Edison yeah. flocking. Yeah, yeah. I, wanna... I want it. Yeah, and well, there's, I that, want, I, there's I, that great I, Panda Express there. Yeah, uh, right next to the Cheesecake Factory. You get it. They, they, yeah. I will yeah, say this. One story. of the places you gave us, though, lady, who lady emailed woman. in, was not in Edison. <laughs> oh. And I want to be very clear about that. Okay. Well, but, there's that. but what yeah. is Edison? It's yeah. a state of mind. Yeah. Um, yes. Neil, really quickly, we're going to review a Christmas movie. <laughs> uh, but you have multiple Christmas movies coming out real quick, and I will let you do the quick plug uh, because uh, uh, pretty soon – 
you're gonna your network TV star Neil Bledsoe, that's and right. that's just gonna kind of be it's gonna be tough to get you back on the show. So really quickly, give the quick plug, and then we'll talk about Maple Valley. Yeah, guys, I'm kind of a big deal this year. I've got not one but two Christmas films coming out. I mean, I I'd, I'd be enthusiastic about it, but I'm contractually obligated to sound a bit bored by it all. So uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I got one in Great American Family coming up with Danica McKellar. It's called Christmas at the Drive-In, Day After Thanksgiving. Two and days. if you do one more with Danica, you're contractually married. Is that correct? Right. Or... Yep. <laughs> no, I get a free sandwich at Subway. Oh, great, great. Wow. Yeah, the sub club card gets filled all the way up. That's unbelievable. <laughs> Six yeah, I, no, I, uh, I I think I get my own network. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's lucrative. Um, Fantastic. And no, it, I know it's uh, they they keep they keep pairing us up. One day we'll just have to get married in real life. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, it'll be weird. Uh, and then on December 11th uh, with Lisa Lapira, I've got uh, Must Love Christmas coming out on CBS. Uh, that will premiere, I think, at 9 p.m. on Sunday, December 11th on CBS. Okay. And it'll be available on Paramount Plus uh, right after that. And I think Christmas at the Drive-In will be available afterwards on Hulu. So right the same day, it'll be, you know, just plethora of options to watch. Hello. I know folks can't find GAF, but, you know, whatever. Hello. CBS, though, I mean, they air Jag. Everybody knows where CBS is. <laughs> They're Jag. That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly exactly ncis christmas edition that's oh. that's what i'm really angling for i'm angling yeah. for my christmas procedural like, oh man uh, well i was under the it. impression that everybody that gets a cbs christmas movie also gets a show on cbs it's is just, that now how that works csi stands for christmas scene investigation <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly well i mean nobody's called me yet brand i think the thing is that i really want to do and this is if they're like if any cbs executives are watching this is my pet if for like comes down, comes down the, you know, the chimney. Obviously there's a cookie eaten and I show up the next day and I'm like, looks like the fat man got here. Before. <laughs> yeah! That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do it. Right. Yeah. That's it. This Holly doesn't look so jolly. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> um, more than just the missile. <laughs> yeah i'll be honest i don't think we actually need to review maple valley i think we're going to call it off and we're just going to do the keep doing this <laughs> yes. keep, keep spitballing this is good stuff yeah, is. um <laughs> but i guess we have to sure uh, oh, for the mutton chops oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the mutton chop. Dude, there are a lot of people out there that do believe that you are going to be in that costume all movie That's long right. That's right. It's because I successfully conv I think I convinced people that I was in a Fast and the Furious remake. <laughs> Set in Victorian London, <laughs> where we were Tokyo drifting a horse and buggy. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the yeah. reason is, is because you said that as much yeah, on the so. Instagrams. Yes. Um, let's talk about a Maple Valley Christmas. Uh, I know that's actually Neil begged to come on to talk about this movie. And so I, did. I said, no, I, did. I, I, I guess we have to. Uh, it originally aired on the Hallmark Movies and Mysteries on November 5th. 2022 and it went a little something like this uh eric has given a horseback tour of the maple valley maple tree there's four people on this tour which sounds about right for a tour about maple um they uh all get back there's a family business and erica's mom is running the joint that is until now uh she's like i am going to retire and i'm leaving the company to erica and sister we all know sister's name Sister. Sister. Uh, we meet Aaron, who uh, works for his grumpy dad. We'll call him Dan. Uh, they're in commercial real estate, and they're trying uh, to, to get a, a buy one of these pieces of land. Uh, his dad sends him to check out this land, and Aaron ends up getting lost in the woods. I don't know if he has a future in real estate. Uh, Erica stumbles upon him, and she's like, hey, I can help you get back to your car. They start walking. They start talking about maple and stuff. Uh, Erica's mom sees him, invites him in for eggnog, and he does not hesitate. They have a wonderful time. They go back outside uh, to start walking to the car. He brushes some snow off of her hair, and she just goes in for a big old kiss. We're like, how long into this yeah. movie? 18 minutes. 18 Maybe. minutes? Yeah. Wow. It's just wowza. Um, he asks where the Fernandez farm is. Um, and she's like, oh, it's right by ours. Why? And he's like, I'm here to buy it. And she says, good night and storms off. Uh, her family wants to buy it. And uh, so that's why she was kind of annoyed. 
by that whole situation. Her sister, though, is not sold on this, not on, on buying the land. She thinks that we can expand in other ways that doesn't involve investing 40 years into trees before you get any pro, uh, a product. Um, the next night uh, at, the Chris, at the farm Christmas tree lighting, Aaron comes up to Erica to apologize for how she responded and explains uh, what the, 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 la the land means to her and her family. And he's like, oh, well, I'll back off then. No problem. Again, I don't think he's going to pick it in real estate. Um, except he calls his dad, and his dad is like, no, we're going to go ahead and buy that land, you dummy. Uh, Aaron keeps trying to talk him out of it. He's not budging. But Aaron has already told her that she that they are going to back out of this deal. So a little bit, a uh, little bit of a sticky wicket there. Uh, Aaron comes over to make some uh, maple candies, burns his hand like a dummy. Uh, as he's getting ready to leave, his dad shows up. Uh, and he's like, oh, hey, now I get why you're trying to get us to back out of this deal. And uh, we're not going to back out of this deal. Um, we got to go check out this land. And that, obviously, she's like, oh, wow, okay, cool. Um, they end up putting in an offer way over asking price, which just crushes Erica. Uh, Aaron apologizes, hangs out more with Erica, and he's like, hey, I could help you out if you with a better offer, maybe even more money. Um, but when she goes to tell her sister uh, about this, she Heidi. gets really mad. Heidi? Heidi. 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 Hi-ho. Um, and so she's really mad about this. She's like, you didn't even talk to me about this. You know how I feel about actually buying this land, not into it. Um, Aaron has a conversation with his dad about, uh, how bad of a dad he was. Uh, and then he quits. Uh, uh, and, and, yeah. And he says, um, unless you pull out of this, uh, offer, I am going to quit. He does not. And so he does quit. Then Erica and Aaron get in a bit of a tussle about a hat or something. Uh, Aaron's dad left him a fire truck, a toy fire truck, which sounds like a silly thing to give a grown man. Because it is. Uh, Fernandez comes over and says that they uh, pulled uh, out of the offer. So the land is all yours. And Erica is like, let me talk it over to my sister. Her sister, uh, they talk, they make up, and they agree that they're going to move forward with the purchase. It's Christmas Eve dinner, and there's a, door, a ring at the doorbell. Erica goes to open it up, and it's Aaron's dad. <laughs> uh, but then Aaron also comes. Aaron and her, uh, his dad make up. All it took was a fire truck, and they hug. Uh, then she takes him out to the barn, gives them his very own hat, and they kiss Yep. Absolutely giant ones, folks. <laughs> Just giant ones. And that, my friends, was a Maple Valley that Christmas. Was, we did it. That's exactly right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll break this movie down with four segments on Deck the Hallmark. It's a great break, but it's even better to be back uh, uh, talking about though? a Maple Valley Christmas. Neil Bledsoe is here yep. mm -hmm. of the uh, ski movie. We all ski. are going to know and love. Ski movie. The villain. Ski, from that movie. ski movie. That's, That's yeah. right. That's it's good. coming out this year, this huh? Year? No. What? Do you have you said, word you how films are made? You said ski movie 2022. We're making it in 2022. That it's makes a lot. That makes yeah. a lot more sense. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know how Hallmark movies work. They they'll get it out by the end of the year. It's a quick turn. Like three days of post production. Right. Don't right. you worry. Yeah. We'll get it out. Yeah. Um. Let's uh, break this down. Let's start with a hot take, Brian. I'm going to start with you. Contractually, we have to. Um. But I think you'll make it worth our while. What do you think about a Maple Valley Christmas? I've never heard. I've never heard such a terrible pitch to a co-host of a podcast. Then, Brian, we're going to start with you. We're contractually obligated to do so. You'll make it worth our while, sarcastically. That's right. I wouldn't say. You wouldn't. Well, I hope I live up to the expectations. So this one, I was going to say this was my favorite uh, Movies and Mysteries movie, but I had to check my notes, and it wasn't. It was my, it's my second favorite. Movie. What was your favorite? Uh, we Need a Little Christmas would be oh, top this oh, one. Oh, oh, uh, I oh. would choose that one over this one, I think. I would. So, uh, but I this one didn't offend me. It was fine. Uh, we did get a kiss 18 minutes in. Wow. Which, yeah. you know, get me some of that Noggy Fresh that he's that they're drinking. Absolutely. Because, Come on. Uh, and Sorry. I'm glad they did that because it, uh, I feel like we got that out of the way early so that we could follow the, the progression here that we were all most excited about, which was the sleigh ride to the. <laughs> 
the uh, rib. Di- uh, what was it? Uh, rib eye dinner right? to the syrup housing the facility yeah, yeah, yeah. that also serves as a prime rib restaurant. Prime sometimes. rib yeah, exactly. dinner. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One star prime rib restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. The we could room. turn this into a sizzler if we try. <laughs> you practically exactly. see the cows so, just mosing yeah. by. <laughs> right. We hate tourists. We want to keep this small town. But please review us on Yelp. That's right. yeah. <laughs> Five yeah. star, please. So yeah. that I, when I heard there was a sleigh ride to a prime rib dinner, I was like, "Let's go!" How does that not get to your number one movies and mysteries? Yeah. Uh, there's a what? That's a where? Well, yeah. there's other parts that just did couldn't compete. Okay. If we need to look at something. Uh, but I think it'll come as no surprise that I wanted more, um, more and more maple business strategy talk <laughs> and planning. And how are we going to grow this business besides making things that include maple as an ingredient? like Or oh, prime rib dinners. Yeah, yeah. We could do I, My yeah, first thought was, let's do this every weekend. But then I feel like the costs associated yeah. with a prime rib dinner sleigh ride every weekend yeah. might not be a good business right. decision. So yeah. this one was fine for me. Okay, great. Uh, Neil Bledsoe, what do you think of Maple Valley Christmas? My hot take, I, I, you know what, I this is my first movies and mysteries experience, and okay. uh, so I was kind of clocking a little bit of the difference in kind of just how they tell stories. And what I was impressed with was that there were some real like moments of of tension and family drama, and I was like, wow, they're really kind of playing this. I was, I love the dynamic between the sisters and mm-hmm. uh, the real like difference of how they saw the business going forward, and. You know what? I, I was I was kind of affected. I I want to give a shout out to my boy, uh, uh, the dad. What was his name? Is like, um, what's the actor's name? I have it written down here. Uh, oh, Daniel Day-Lewis. No, what, Paul Jarrett. Yeah, Paul Paul Jarrett. Paul Jarrett was fantastic in this, and like uh, that dynamic. I think of the, of these kind of like two broken families trying to kind of like trying to find a way forward i thought was like wow that's a different color than i've seen in a hallmark movie um that was i think what impressed me the the kiss i think like as much as i liked it very very early on and the kind of like the interruption and like okay now we're going to be adversaries even though we clearly like each other it was an interesting device but i think it let a lot of the tension out when i wanted more like ultimately this movie was fine it was like it was something i could watch but i don't think it's something i'm going to gonna go back to because like there was just no tension in it i I thought it was like all right it's very pleasant people kind of moving towards christmas but there was nothing really at the end at stake you know that was that was my hot take okay um so if you guys recall during the preview show uh this movie was in my bottom Bottom three three. of movies that i'm excited about the reason was I know that I'm going to enjoy it. I always enjoy Andrew Walker, but I've seen this Andrew Walker movie many, many times now. And like, I know that I have three wise men and a baby coming. And so this one just pales so much in comparison to the excitement that I have for that movie because it's so different. And I, I, I think I kind of hit on the head there um, about kind of what it was like watching this movie. I did enjoy it. I did think that the two leads had great chemistry. The the kiss at the end was wowie zowie. Uh, Goodness gracious. It's still happening, I believe. They fade to black, but don't let that fool you. It's still going on (laughs) to this day. Um, And I did think that they did so, like, that they changed it up, you know, a little bit. The kiss at the 18 minute mark. Um, That's probably the thing. Uh, But Andrew Walker is wonderful. Always like, um, um, I'd never seen Peyton List before. from the other Peyton List and Cobra Kai. So I I thought she was really wonderful. And yeah, overall, the cast was great. But again, I've seen this movie, and so I thoroughly enjoyed it. It is my favorite movie in Mysteries of the Year so far. Um, But, you know, it's Andrew Walker. He's done so many of these. I just want to keep... I want to keep throwing challenges that make me continue to be like, this is why Andrew Walker is the guy. And yes, this is why Andrew Walker is the guy, but mm. he's already done this. Let's keep throwing really fun projects at my guy, Andrew. That's, that's all that I'm asking yeah. for here. Yeah. He's already done this a dozen times. Like he, like, and that's not to his fault. Like he makes these movies and people watch him in these movies and he's a wonderful dude and a wonderful actor. This thing is just DOA. Like it is just like, he's great. He he literally in Christmas Tree Lane with Alicia Witt two years ago is almost this same plot except he doesn't travel outside of the city. He's working for. Go ahead. Can I just make a a 
question of clarification. So when we say we've seen a walk, and this is also my first a walk experience. I oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So when we say we've seen him do this, is this kind of like the uh, corporate guy who's yes. in the state of arrested development and needs to heal something with his father? He we're... literally in Christmas Tree Lane with Alicia Witt two years ago. His dad owns the comp architecture firm. He's sure. underneath him. They're acquiring right. this street to shut everything down. That's Alicia true. Witt's dad runs the blah, blah, blah. And he try he loves Alicia Witt and doesn't mm -hmm. tell her that his dad as long as he possibly can and then does. They have a it's the same, same exact premise, like across yeah. the board. Um, and he's not, I mean, like in Sweet Autumn, I'm pretty sure he shows up and Nikki Deloach is trying to save her aunt's like autumn st store town or whatever and he like he like this is something he does a lot and he does it incredibly well I, aside from the kiss in the first the first act of this movie and aside from the fact that they tried to go pretty hard on the father-son relationship which they normally don't go that hard they don't go to the point to where you have these conversations where it's like you never loved me as a right. as a dad so, Th that that was this was yeah. like a Croce song. It That's was right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the cat was all in the cradle, like all in it, and, and like, I, like. So, I aside from those two things, it was a movie that unfortunately I'd seen so many times, and mm. also Peyton List, who I think does a really good job in this movie. I've never seen her in anything. Her character is one that is just always upset at everything. Like yeah. mom wants to leave bad. Mom wants Italian boyfriend to come here bad. Sister doesn't want to buy the property bad. Dude wants to sell the property bad. Andrew Walker's there bad. Andrew Walker leaves bad. I mm -hmm. like it. There's just, it, it just was tough. There was not a lot to pull for here and there was not a she lot to separate lot it. She hated a lot of things. She was like, yeah. I don't like tourists. I don't that's like, right. <laughs> change yes. i don't like anything at a christmas dinner that's not has that's to right do with maple yeah fish. no yeah don't eat it. maple syrup prime rib slaves yeah. that is that's, it that's there it. the list like, ends she's like a maple tarian basically <laughs> <laughs> maple tarian yeah exactly and so i i hate it but this is one of the worst of the season so far i i, I don't think there's any doubt about it i don't there what, is a doubt about it. what are the yeah. other uh, movies and mysteries movies uh um, need a little christmas th christmas that's, bedtime stories yeah those are worse than this um Christmas bedtime stories is worse than this. Yeah. Need a little Christmas is a more authentic movie with more integrity, in my opinion. I don't know if it's better. Both of them are snoozers. They're a snoozer. I don't you could say that all you want. This is bottom three or four for yeah. me. For sure. For sure. Okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Um, let's talk about feels. What gave us uh feels, Christmas feels, the like while watching this movie, Brian. So uh, by the way, yep. you showed up. During yep. the hot take segment, I just want to give you your flowers. Thank you. And that is contractually obligated. That he is also no, no, contractual no. obligated. Okay. No, that's straight. That's straight from, <laughs> straight from the heart. The, the Off script. Mother's mouth. Wow. Okay. That didn't make it sound I don't know. very good. Go ahead. So this one, uh, the all the feel, my feels here. I uh, I got to go back to the sleigh ride prime prime rib dinner. Uh, that how could you not? How could you not? How could you not? As far as I'm concerned, this movie should just all be in that barrel room. When they walked in there, those yeah. lights strung up. <laughs> The acoustic, I know you kind of made fun of the music a little bit. I enjoyed the <laughs> the singing on the acoustic. I thought them walking around. Maybe you don't want to walk it around while you're trying to eat your prime rib. Put them in a corner until you're done eating. But I like the music. I like the vibe in that room. Uh, that was the feels for me. Neil Bledsoe, feels? I got to say that that Jim Croce, Cat Stevens moment with the truck got me. Mm. Uh, and uh, just a... a I'll give you a brief tangential story real quick because we'll this allow is it from you. Thank you very much. So I, I cried during a Baywatch episode when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even, I'm not even fooling about this. Like, and it was, it, there was, there was, so I was kind of primed for this and it was, a, it was a very special. Prime episode. ribs. Did you say prime? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was prime ribs for this. Basically the, the story with this is like David Hasselhoff, big Mitch Buchanan is hosting father son Olympics on the beach. And uh, he's like getting all the kids together and he sees this one kind of loner and he says, like, wait a minute, where's your dad? And the kid like turns to him, tears in his eyes. It's like, I don't have a dad. And Big <laughs> Buchanan says, you know what? I'll do you a solid. I'll be your dad for this father son Olympics. And I'm like, this is great. Wow. And then you start to see them kind of practice. David Hasselhoff is tossing the football. The kid catches it. And then he tosses another football and he misses it. And you see the kid does have a dad. He's just embarrassed of his dad because his dad is a little person. And I'm like, oh, my God. The dad. Oh. Oh, my 
walks this. And he's like, the kid is embarrassed and ashamed because it's like, my dad's not a hero like big Mitch Buchanan. And so he sees it's like big. And then the, the whole tenor of the episode changes and David Hasselhoff has to like heal this father son divide. The kid's like not having it. And finally the dad goes and he's got his umbrella and he's sitting on the beach and the little girl is about to drown out in the surf and there's nary a lifeguard to be found. So the, the dad swims out there and he saves the little girl, but he almost drowns in the process. And the kid sees this and he witnesses his father becoming a hero. And I am just tears. And then like, you know, I think Pamela Anderson's resuscitating me. He says, I love you, dad. Says, I love you too. And it's at this moment that my big brother comes in the room when tears are streaming <laughs> on my face. And I turn around and it was like, it was worse than being caught masturbating. It was like, why are you watching this stupid show? And I'm like, <laughs> and he was like, oh man. So my brother and I don't have a good relationship. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, you know what Neil's not telling you is, is that kid in that Baywatch episode was played by Neil Bledsoe. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a 35 year old man. I was like, what am I playing? <laughs> Um, but I brought was, my speed up. It was because, and I think that, and that's that's great. And I know Dan, you hated the, fi you know that the, there's a lot of like things that we don't like. The fire truck, it's like that's kind of a wait what moment. But it was because of that fire truck, and it's because I wanted to be a firefighter as a kid that 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 moment got me, and I was like, I was a little choked up. Yeah. So that's wow. my moment. I um I got feels when he quit like when he finally did it I was like good good on you you did it and that that was like it, it, like his dad like respected that was the thing that his dad was like you know what he, he did it so I don't know I, I, quitting worked yeah. for me quitters the, never get one but it do give me feels that's so right. <laughs> the only the only way you're getting me on a sleigh ride in Montana <laughs> is with a prime rib dinner. <laughs> That's, right. that's that it is works. it this poor horse singular <laughs> is carrying not with wheels that sleigh doesn't have any wheels nope. he's not getting any help from physics here he's no. carrying a sleigh load of people to a prime rib dinner yeah. and and that is a move <laughs> by this this movie making uh, team here but i will say this the only way that i'm getting on a sleigh in montana for any reason, would be to go to a, a an exclusive prime rib dinner. So that so that that would be that would be my feels. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh great job, everybody, all around. Uh, we're gonna take one more quick break. We'll come back with the way what and the what the hallmark here on deck the hallmark. We're back. We're talking Maple Valley Christmas. We got Neil Bledsoe here, Baywatch uh, ex uh, enthusiast, enthusiast. <laughs> and, and star, and star. Uh, <laughs> let's get to the wait. What? Let's start with you, Brian. What? What made you go wait? What? What? You're watching this. So one of the things was the neighbor who called listing his land a formality. Yes. Which I mean, land in Montana. There's nothing. There's just a formality about that. You're going to get bitters, <laughs> multiple bitters. He he right. couldn't be more cavalier yeah. about how to sell property just if he tried. Really, he's never seen an episode of Yellowstone, right? Never Obviously. seen one. No, never seen one. Yeah, John Dutton would have had his head. But also yeah. later, it, when he's like, "Oh, oh, they're out. You want in? I'll just get you the docks, yeah. and it's sold." That's not how that just works. Docu sign that stuff and get That's it right, right back to me. It's a real quick e sign. He's also just telling uh, other bidders that someone else outbid them like he's just like yeah. giving information yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter hey just to give you a heads up those guys they were really high still time though <laughs> yeah and that still goes, time. that's sort of like a way uh, uh yeah what the hallmark for me was is he doing it is he selling it himself because he's doing an awful lot of the, the communicating <laughs> himself doing the legwork there to get <laughs> yeah. that three percent yeah so, yeah go ahead was that it? Uh, I got more, but I'll, you know, for save some time, you can move along. No, no, some time. Time. What are you doing? Right, I'll do this one. So they, they, they were. So we don't want to shortchange the listener. Come That's on, true. Dude. I'm here for the listener, not not to make uh, time for you guys. Okay, so the other big thing here that just stuck out to me was <laughs> if you how, do this for the listener, you do make time for us in the process. I want to. They want to hear you guys too. Okay, I think. they will. They'll hear us. Right. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff to keep in mind. And you're up here. <laughs> you're right. You're so right. they made the family. They, they do maple products. They yes. use maple syrup and everything else they could possibly include maple. And so um, they, they were talking about so many things that they were making that had maple in it. And mm -hmm. it just, I was sitting there like, why are you investing so much money and time into using your stuff as an ingredient? Just make great maple syrup, sell the maple syrup, make, make lollipops, and that's it. Stop making breads and cookies. And there was mm -hmm. just so much time on things where, there, where maple was an ingredient. Wow. You, so you want them to make fewer items yes. with maple in it yes 
Wow. Focus on just the maple. Why are you well, spending you're a, all this a money? maple purist? Wow, that's interesting. I guess you I could didn't see that. it coming. Yeah, I, I think, think I think so. Man. I didn't even think about that. Man. Yeah, so okay. many, so much time spent wow. baking and yeah. you know, putting stuff yeah. together. Neil knows. Yeah, we maybe should have just moved on. We? Yeah, we, uh, we Neil, have. Neil, what made you go away, well, buddy? Uh, you know, it, it was a weird geography thing. One that. Awok was uh, was on his way. I couldn't figure out where they were from because, like the the establishing shot that they were all in was, I think, Chicago. Although he kind of made it sound like he was born and raised in San, San Diego. Diego. He says right. that. Yeah, yeah, he does say that. And so, but they're it's clear they're like their their corporate Death Star is in uh, somewhere in Chicago as well. That kind of made me go wait what? And also the relationship with the uh, like the assistant, the underling that was like just serving as an intermediary between the dad, but also like AWOC's choice of, uh, of going to Aspen through Montana didn't really make a lot of sense. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, yeah, passing yeah. through. I was like, how do you, <laughs> you know, I'm sure yeah. there's a direct flight. Um, <laughs> that, Every flight goes through Billings. You know that. Yeah. How many times yeah, have you stopped right. at the Billings yeah, exactly. airport, Neil? Yeah, I, I mean, a lot, to be fair. <laughs> but, uh, that kind of made me go, wait, what? And then, yeah, and then also... AWOC's decision, I'm sorry to keep flagging AWOC, but his decision <laughs> to put his finger in the boiling yeah. maple syrup on the stove, yeah. that, that person is not to be trusted. <laughs> no wonder his dad and him don't have a good relationship. I mean, yeah. like some, oh, I see something burning. I'm going to touch it, dad. Um, yeah, yeah, he's a, that's a dummy, dumb, dumb, dumb move there. Yeah, exactly. And then her, uh, and then Peyton lists, uh, when she said like, oh, I don't date tourists. I was like, Wow, just like <laughs> hyper local. I was like, she's got a strong anti tourist vibe. And then the other thing that kind of made me go, wait, what is like when the, the Italian uh, paramour was, uh, was pitching a dish of the seven fishes? I was like, where are they getting fresh fish in Montana? <laughs> this, this is, it's not going to be good. And that was the one time I did agree with her complaining so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you try to bring me. Yeah, yeah, you try to bring me fish for Christmas dinner in Montana. <laughs> yeah. All bets are off. That's no. why yeah. there's so and many his, flights his, to Montana. Yeah, from and his San Diego. To kind of like was to just glaze it in maple. Which also, <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> <laughs> what if we took bad fish and we put <laughs> maple on it? We are, we are going to have a trout uh, in the, uh, maple glaze on it. Like, no, no. They know. Get out of my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was uh, this is America. <laughs> This is America. We do things. We don't have fish. Nothing fresh in this house. All maple glaze. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, I, if, if, I don't know. This kid, they just said that there's 10 days until Christmas. Yo, and then this guy. kid says he's leaving for Christmas tomorrow. You're going, you're taking, you're going to be at home for 10 days before, before Christmas? Christmas. Yeah. That's a decision. That's a decision to make. Brand, it's a bold quiet, statement. Quitting. He's quiet quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's just, right. That's right. Also, this, uh, for four days later, I will not. <laughs> I will not be back. Um, the mom was really dragging out this Paris announcement. Yes. <laughs> like she gives it in three different announcements. Um, I just want you guys to know that I am uh, gonna be taking a step back from the business. Also, I want you to know that I'm going to Paris. Also, I want you to know that I'm not going to be coming back from Paris. <laughs> also, I want you to know that I have a lover. <laughs> <laughs> Could I have told you all that at once? Yes. Yeah, was, sorry, was it actually Paris or was she going to Tuscany? Tuscany. That's not, because it, oh, yeah, Tuscany. Point, sorry. Yeah, 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 Tuscany. Sorry, Tuscany. Wherever, wherever she's going. Yeah. She's a place going where to, they can get fresh fish. She's going yeah. there nowhere right. quickly. She's going there yeah. nowhere quickly. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. But they're gonna they're gonna do a layover in Billings to get there. <laughs> yeah. They That's gotta right. get there. You can't go from you can't go from Paris to Rome. That's right. Without yeah. stopping in Billings, Montana. You get it. <laughs> Go back over and then you come back. Yeah, that's real quick. Well, with the way the that's flat right. Earth is. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. That's, that's exactly that's right. right. That's exactly right. Uh, Dan. Um, gosh, for a movie that has a hat metaphor running all the way through it, they do not wear hats in Montana in the winter time, which is wild to me because it's freaking cold in Montana, yeah. guys. Like it's yeah. like below zero, and they are just like 
Nobody is even caring. Nobody's ears are red, nose are red. And then the one time Andrew Walker puts on a hat, he puts on this thing and he covers maybe the top of his ears and like not even all of his head. It's, mm-hmm. It looks like he's late for a spin doctor's concert. Like he does not look like he's he's trying to cover up for, for the winter. Right, well, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that you, you know, maybe not you, Brand, but you know, yeah, uh, like everybody else will be on board. I look, I get we want to paint this guy out to be a cutthroat father, but let me get this straight. He left a note on the fire truck. So, yeah. this fire truck was his kid's favorite toy, and he left a note that said it's out of batteries, but lie to the child, lie to him, and tell him that it's broken. He couldn't have told that to his wife, couldn't have left it somewhere safe. He wrote that out in print so his kid could read it. Yeah. You're the worst dad. I think worst he wrote, dad. He wrote it in crayon, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> he even did a little drawing below it in case yeah. the reading was spotty. <laughs> he did a pictograph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture of Andrew. Fire Klein. truck. Yeah, cross right. through. Cross through. <laughs> JK kid crying. <laughs> yeah. And then when he gives him the new one, the box is wrapped, but the lid, when he opens it, the box opens and the lid, the gift wrapping is curled around the lid. <laughs> like it's never been wrapped. Like yeah. the lid yeah. is actually wrapped to open. Yeah. Which yeah, is, I love that. Yeah. It was something. Yeah. It was a move. And then my last question is really so this, this, prime rib dinner i know we've talked about it a bunch <laughs> talking my language but it, is it is it part of the tourist attraction of the sleigh ride so is it we're all going to sleigh because they sleigh ride like six people up there and they get to this place that is just got maple syrup and bourbon and stuff everywhere and it's jam-packed with people mm-hmm. yep. so is this a restaurant i was confused by what the cell is here like can they just go to the restaurant without the sleigh ride or is the sleigh ride the only way to get there I, because it seems like this place is in the woods yeah. and it was a weird, it was a weird bit even for this mm-hmm. hot in Montana maple lodge. Um, so I, I didn't get that at all. Listen, it's prime rib. It's yeah. prime rib. You know, you don't have to answer any questions. It's prime rib. Yeah. Uh, it's time for what the Hallmark Spar show. We wonder what could have been. Maybe if this is a question we still have. What are we still wondering about, Brian? So mine, uh, you know, I'm going to tap that uh, prime rib tree one more time. <laughs> and uh, Mine was the same, similar to yours. It, they only took six, six people out, but there were about a, at least a dozen. At least at a dozen dinner. in the dinner. And no oh. no other horses out All front. candlelit dinner, because yeah. nothing's more romantic. Say horse? Yes. Okay. Horse. Horse. <laughs> one horse yeah. out front. No extra horses, carriages, nothing. But So then my other question was... Maybe you got to pay extra for the horse. Everybody else did oh, like a, yeah. a bus. It's like a basic, yeah, like a bus out there. Yes, they bus it on out. I mean, But there are no roads. Well, they must have roads by now, right? <laughs> They must have so, roads by now. But they, how do they, do they cook it there in the barrel room? Are they having to prep it, cook it somewhere else, and bring it to the barrel room? These, those are things I was it's wondering. It's almost like they didn't think through the yeah. prime rib dinner. I was thinking the logistics of the prime rib dinner got yeah. me thinking. The nerve. So I would still eat there every night of the week. If I right. Could. Yeah. It was stunning. Yes. Stunning to behold. Uh, Neil, what are you still wondering about? A lot. Uh, <laughs> a lot. I, I, I mean, besides the geography, um, you know what I'm I'm wondering about was like initially I was I had to Google whether or not there were like maple farms in Montana to begin with. I did too. I Googled and it as well. And apparently there are. Apparently they don't have sugar maples. They use their own kind of maples out there. Um, the geography really kind of got me wondering a little bit. And also, uh, oh gosh, what else? You know what also just kind of had me wondering or like kind of check me out in a what the hallmark sort of way is the is the weird kind of draping of scarves that everybody had, which I knew yeah. was just a network note of like, hey, can we add some more color to the outfit? And so <laughs> like we're going to dress it with a scarf. And it's like that. It's like that old like um, Portlandia sketch where you put a bird on it. But instead yeah. of that, yes, a scarf. yes, so that that kind of had me kind of checked out. And there was some other like uh, and also the other thing had me wondering at the prime rib dinner. Did the sister and her husband ever eat, or were they just forced <laughs> into like, you know, the, yeah. to, to, to literally sing for their dinner? And I don't yeah. think they ever ate. Yeah. Maybe uh-huh. they never. Yeah. Um, uh, my guy Andrew Walker has done so many of these movies, um, but I have to imagine every once in a while you stumble upon a line that makes you <laughs> laugh, and I just want to know if he had a hard time not laughing when he said this line. 
I've been thinking what I had to do to earn the hats. But now I think. Then I realize. Then I realize you were never going to give me the hat <laughs> and then storm out. I love that line. I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> but I can't imagine a world where you get to that line where you have to say, you were never going to give me the hat and then storm out of a barn in Montana that you don't just Especially chuckle to yourself a little bit, right? Literally earlier yeah. in the movie, she said, hats aren't given, they're earned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And apparently at the end of the movie, he's like, you know what I just realized? <laughs> Hats are given. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. right. You're never gonna give me that. He's so deeply fearful of change. That really <laughs> yeah. kind of like it's like there are only so many people in Montana that get to wear hats. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Can't go buy those at a store. I was thinking about what I had to do to earn that hat. Right. Once again, hasn't seen Yellowstone. That literally, yeah. the ranch hands, ranch hands gets a gets a hat. Exactly. Everybody gets a hat. I know. I kept waiting for that, like the the guy who's the old crusty guy on Yellowstone that comes up. And is like Jimmy. What are you doing? I kept wanting to see him. Kind of like <laughs> the mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He says he finds a way to say Buckle Bunny in every sentence. I don't know yeah. how he does it. Um, <laughs> you were never gonna give me the hat. You were never gonna give me the hat. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> my question is, is that I get that he's now on his own and he's starting his own commercial real estate business where he buys properties and i know he's going to help Peyton list here but if they're together i know apparently all everybody runs through billings but if that's not the case how is he running a commercial real estate business in montana where a lot of people where only a few people own a lot of land that, that doesn't check yeah. out i don't know how that's going to work moving yeah forward. and they do point out that the the town is only one block that's right so it's like not a lot of people right, that's yeah. right. So maybe Andrew Ark was right. Maybe they should should not have given him yeah. the hat. Yeah. Well, yes, that. <laughs> yeah. This is this is the business equivalent of him sticking his finger in the boiling maybe. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, what if I was a commercial real estate salesman <laughs> in Montana? Exactly. The go, go, go. In Alaska. And they're gonna be like, ah, I just feel better about this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the right move. Felt right at the time. You're never gonna yeah. give me the hat. <sighs> Uh, Neil Blesser, thank you so much for joining us. Um, network television superstar, uh, soon to be ski instructor, uh, villain, just a, just a yeah. marvel to behold. How can people uh, follow you on the internet machine? And then um, anything else you want to leave with the people? Uh, well, I'm currently in the midst of a crime spree, so find me on, uh, you know, <laughs> Deadline. I'd say he's like, been a CBS star already. From what we're exactly, understanding, exactly. You can find some of my early work on Baywatch, as we mentioned. <laughs> and uh, if you want to just, you know, get some hot takes, uh, I'm always on the because I bled so handle. Fantastic. Fantastic. It's a That's great it. handle, by the way. Yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's a wonder. Uh, we did, everybody. Congratulations. We got one more episode this week. It's going to come out tomorrow. And until then, maybe we'll be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. 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 The that Sounds Fun podcast. It's produced by Tracy Noah's name. It's recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com.